Hi and welcome to another imp video. Um, this video isn't specifically about imps, uh, although we're going to use these imp engines to demonstrate uh, a common question that comes up um, regarding the difference between a dry liner block and a wet liner block. So we've got a few specimens lined up here to help me explain in the video what I'm waffling on about. So we'll start with this. Now, this is um, the predecessor to the imp engine. It's it's a Climax FWM, which I believe stands for Featherweight Marine. Now you can see um, the way that Climax went about doing the engine was it's aluminium casting and then they've machined it to take this little top hat liner, which sits inside on that shelf and it all works superbly. And then obviously the Roots was looking for an engines for their imp. So they uh, approached Climax and hence why imps have got you know, an, a Climax based engine, you can, you can see the relationship just looking at the two of them there. So this is an imp engine. And basically the liners in this engine are dry. These are cast in. These are also dry, by the way. This one's a wet liner block, but we'll come to that in a minute. So this is a dry liner, which sits on a shelf. And this is a dry casting liner. So if you can imagine in the factory before the shutters came in for the side of the um, the die cast um, and then aluminium was poured in they had the four liners sat on spigots and then the shutters came in and they poured them all on alley so when it cooled down the aluminium was fully coated all the way around the outside of the liner so it's called a casting liner and this works a treat um, as you can see from this little bit of uh, this is a liner that i've i've machined out and it's end up in the scrap bin but I've rescued it for demonstration purposes if you look you can see it's ribbed on the outside so these liners never drop they're great the only thing that could be whinged at about the imp and I don't know why they didn't do it instead of leaving them with like a little hat on the top with some cast iron for the head gasket to sit on they did this thing where I know you can see if I try and zoom in can you see the little it was like 16th of an inch flash of alley on the top of the liner so the reason they did that, I think, was for expansion purposes, so that the gasket, the head gasket, sat on the same material all the way across the top of the head, uh, the block, sorry. So the liners cast in, if you've ever took an imp engine apart, it's had a bit of an overheat, quite often you'll find that the aluminium is lifted where it's very thin there, and then there's no land for the head gasket to seal. So we end up scrapping that block off and saying, oh, that's for wet linering. So, this is an 874, well, it's actually a 930, but it's the same principle. This is an imp casting dry liner. And just to go over it again, it has the, um, the ribbed liner on the outside, so it doesn't drop. Unlike other mass production engines, for example, the Rover V8, the late one, which has massive problems with the liners dropping um, and causing, uh, you know, coolant to enter the cylinder etc because they're just smooth liners they're not sat on a shelf they're just shrunk in when it's cast and that's it so over the years of the aluminium expanding and contracting through all the heat cycles you end up with a situation where the parent liner behind cracks and then you would get uh, water comes up between the, the parent liner and the iron liner and gets into the chamber because the head gasket on a rover v8 seals on the aluminium bit on the outside it doesn't sit on the liner the line is very thin but we're um digressing now so this is a, a wet liner block and obviously the reason why we call it a wet liner block is because the liner gets wet so this wasn't done by um, a manufacturer of any type it was done by people who tuned imps to make them bigger capacity so they're 875 as standard and then um, obviously they go 998, 1040, etc. on standard stroke and then bigger again when you put a crankshaft in them with longer stroke. So as you can see, there's you know, there's not an awful lot left of the block, is there? It's it's had a lot machined out of it. Now there's lots of different theories about these engines, but my personal thoughts on it is it's it's a bit of um, an engineering uh, it's a bit like a Porsche 911 where it's not the greatest design, but they got round it in that what they did, they used, uh, they realised that there was an issue with the liner because the design of the engine, the head is bolted to these threads in the top of the block. And um, so when the engine expands and contracts, if you've seen other videos, we talked about the expansion rate of the blocks, the head goes with the block 
and then obviously we've got this iron liner and it's sat on a shelf two inches down so effectively when the head goes up with the block the liner gets left behind so to get around this they use something called a wills ring which is um, a little gas filled ring and they put a radius in the aluminium of the cylinder head like a groove we'll call it for the wheel string to be supported and then the idea was when you clamp the head down the wheel string deformed and created a little flat it had about 20 thou pinch on it and that per created a perfect seal now this does work an absolute treat you know the preload that you put on the wheel string when you torque it down initially will make it last for a while but if you've ever tried to run one of these engines with say like a 13 to 1 compression and 9000 rpm eventually what you get is you get a bit of a liner shuffle because when if you imagine it's got warm so the liner is no longer being held in hard by the wheel string because the head has gone one way etc with the expansion so you get a little bit of shuffle and you may if you've ever looked at a racing imp engine you'll see on the on the thermostat housing at the back here they have a little bleed that goes back to the header tank from the coolant jacket and that's because they realise that every now and again these these rings would leak a little bit if the engine got warm, especially because the warmer it got, the further the the head grew, you know, and took the pressure off the off the ceiling ring. So they they had this little system where they had the bleed valve that ran to the header tank, and then the engine would never airlock because a lot of them said front rads. So the pipe would come out of the back of the the hot water pipe, come out the back of the head, and it immediately go downhill. So you had to remove those air bubbles so you didn't get an airlock. Now, you, you might be saying, like, or thinking, um, but lots of engines are wet line. And, you know, Alfa Romeo engines, Peugeot 205, all, all this sort of um, thing from the 80s and, well, the Alfa from the 60s and 70s. But the one thing that was different about them was, if you have a look at the way they're designed, they uh, don't have the thread for the head bolt in the top of the block. They use a stud, and the stud is tapped into sort of the area around where the mains are. So when you pull the head down you effectively pull from the bottom of the block and the bottom of the liner area which helps to keep a um, a good a good pressure on the firing of the head gasket to keep it from failing obviously imps did have a bad reputation with the head gaskets failing but you know i don't believe if they've been kept cool they would have had any more problems than any other engine that ran a head gasket back in the day i mean the difference, I suppose, between a mini fell and head gasket and an imp was the mini could get overheated. You put a new gasket on it, probably not even need to skim it with it being iron, and it'd be fine again. Whereas once an imp's got had a good toasting, the uh, the top of this liner here, if you have a faceplate one, because it's soft aluminium, the the, the firing sinks into it, and um, you know you never get the same same squish on the on the gasket. So it's just yeah, add it against it anyway. I'm digressing again. So this is a wet liner block, old school, works a treat, no problem at all. Um, lots of imps run like this for many, many a year. And then this is um, my take on it, which is um, obviously this is actually a long rodded engine and it's just a, a spacer plate engine. So it's um, it's got a long stroke crank in it, or it will have when it's built. And you can see that this is uh, similar to the original Climax design in that it's a little top hat liner that sits on a shelf right at the top of the block. So when we um, tighten the head down, effectively it squashes all these three, like a little laminate together. And there's a little you know a little shelf there where the, where the liner sits. Nothing can move, the whole lot is rigid. You don't get any liner shuffle, anything like that. Now the only reason I can think that this wasn't done more back in the day was because um, back in the day they probably didn't have the glues that we've got now because the job of the liner really apart from obviously supporting the pistons it's got to transfer the heat from the combustion into the into the water so this works brilliantly because you know the heat goes straight into the iron and it's got water on the other side of it but with the modern glues that transfer heat really well we can we can make sure that the heat is taken from the uh, skin liner into the parent liner and then taken away by the, the cold water to, to keep it cool now if you look you might think crikey it's got thin liners in this but it's only as thin as say an original 998 because it's got a lot of land everywhere else but it's only as strong as its weakest point and if you ever look at hoop stresses and all that 
your, your weakest point is where you've got a flat, especially on the outside of a, a circle like that. So these liners deliberately don't have flats milled on them so they don't crack because, oh, well, they have cracked in the past, to be honest, but that's for another reason. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're, they're not, they've not got any flats machined on them. So I hope I've not gone on out of the way too much, but, and that explains it to you, basically. Wet liner, dry liner, top hat liner, skin liner, it's all covered. Any questions, go to Google and Google it, because I won't be able to answer them. Okay, thank you for watching.